guys, how's it going and welcome back. So I've got my mid-2009 MacBook Pro out. We're going to do a RAM upgrade and I'm going to show you how to do it on this laptop. Same will apply to any of the MacBook Pros that are put together the same way. So make sure it's off first, which we already know it is. Now this particular laptop, you cannot remove the battery first, so make sure the power is off. Otherwise you'll cook something. So we've got uh, two 4 gig modules. Now this laptop maxes out to 8 gigs. Right now it's got 4 in it from the factory. Kind of sucky, especially with Yosemite. But 8 should help. Cross fingers. But uh, anyways, I have a little backstory to this too. I went looking around town on North Bay for RAM like everywhere. Like Best Buy of all places used to stock boatloads of RAM. Now there was like four choices on the shelves and none of them what I needed. And then, of course, there was Staples, and then the actual Apple dealer had nothing. Like, there's an Apple repair shop in town specifically for Apple. No, nope, they didn't have it either. I didn't want to wait to order it in. And then I thought, well, what about Amazon? Well, Amazon, I could have got it for like 80 bucks and 15 bucks shipping, plus tax, and then had to wait God knows how long. So, I ended up going to, uh, I believe it was North Bay Computers. And uh, I called them and they had it in stock and it's like 94 bucks and it's the right stuff. So in case you're wondering, uh, DDR3, 1066 megahertz, and this is 2 times 4 gig sticks. Now some of your MacBook Pros may go to more than 8 gigs, so check your specs first. But this one's for the MacBook and MacBook Pro, uh, mid-2010, early-2011, late-2011, iMac, mid-2010 and mid-2011. Uh, but it's also, of course, compatible with this one. Um, even though it says 2010 on here, it's mid-2009. So Apple's kind of like car dealers. It's released for the following year, even though they called it 2009. But whatever. You're going to need a really super fine tip jeweler screwdriver for this. And make sure it fits the screws absolutely perfect. Okay? If it doesn't, you could end up getting into some problems. Because these are very small screws. And... Uh, You've got to make sure that you've got the proper fitting screwdriver tip. Otherwise, you're going to have problems. Also, you're going to find there's a couple screws that are a little longer than the other ones, and you've got to know exactly where they go. So do yourself a favor and line them up, just like I'm doing here, so you know where they go back. Because you don't want to put a screw back where it doesn't belong or, again, problems. So there's the three long ones. things are very tiny. Now I do also have a magnetic tip screwdriver which really helps out a lot. You've got to be careful we're going to lose a screw. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten total. Also, remember the orientation of your cover when you take it off. Gently go around it. Oh, you bugger. Like so. Now your cover is only going to go on one way. So either way, keep an eye on orientation. And holy cow and dust bunnies. Wow, this thing's... Uh, needs a bit of a clean out so you know what we're gonna stop the film here for a second and I'll be right back okay guys so I've got my RAM opened up here so you you want to touch some metal on here like your CD-ROM just touch it with your hand 
maybe a piece of metal over here with your other hand just to discharge any static electricity that might be in you because this is a grounded out area so it's okay your battery by the way is in here as well um, mine actually is doing really good it charges to about 98 sometimes 99 percent um, so eventually one of these days I got to replace it but not right now anyway so getting out the ram there's a couple little fingers here you just carefully spread them and your first ram chip lifts out put it over there and then this one here we gotta try and do the same sort of dealy to get it out ah, there we go very carefully you don't want to break any clips So, now we take one of the new chips. Remember the orientation of the RAM, short side, long side, but you'll see when you look into the computer, there's a short side and a long side because there's a divider there, so you really can't screw this up. Make sure it's seated in evenly before you push it down. Like so, that one's in. And now for this one here. Just wiggle it in just gently side to side. When it feels like it's firmly in place, don't shove hard, but when it feels like it's firmly in place, just push down and click into place. That's all there is to that. Then all you gotta do is put the lid back on and fire it up. So um, I'm gonna shut the camera off here and um, Resume back out and we'll reorientate stuff for you put it back together and then we'll fire up the laptop and See if she catches fire or if she works All right guys, so Put your long screws back in first where they go Now, when you tighten these up, just go until they stop and give them just a little snug. That's all they need. If you go more than that, you can snap these screws. They are very fine screws. And if you don't snap one, you're likely to strip a hole. These are basically little steel screws going into aluminum, so either way, you've got to be careful. Check this one. There, that's that feels better. Okay, bloody tiny screws. Now this will not void your warranty, by the way, unless you cook it. Well, kiss your warranty goodbye. But. Apple does encourage people to now change their own hard drives, CD-ROMs, if you happen to have one in your computer, RAM. It's not a major deal to do this stuff. And it will save you a boatload of cash. And I'll tell you right now, Apple techs are somewhere around about 150 bucks an hour, at least in Canada. So... I would suggest learning to do this yourself. Hence, how to do this. Do -do 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 -do. Reach 
check this one again. It just something just doesn't look right. That's got to be a factory defective screw, I think. It's tight, so I'm not going to push it any further. All right. Well, that's always a good sound. This should enhance performance quite a bit with an extra four gigs of RAM. Yeah, four gigs by itself sucks. Now, there is third-party RAM out there, and I will say this right now. They can put this computer beyond eight gigs. I read about it. I've heard about it. Blah, blah, blah. I do not recommend doing it. I've been an Apple tech since 1990 myself, and I can tell you right now, doing that will be the stupidest thing you'll ever do. It's kind of like purposely overclocking your PC. Now, a lot of computers can now support their own overclocking. Even Apple does. But it's an automated system, which is fine and quite safe. But when you're doing this with RAM, and you're going beyond the design specs you will cook your computer over time. So I would not recommend doing it. Just stick with whatever your computer has, and if it's still not enough, well, buy a new computer. That's my theory. That's the finder. This Mac. And we have 8 gigs of RAM online. Woohoo! So, we should actually be able to play a little bit harder core video games. So that's kind of cool. Let's see what it's like to launch a program now. Oh, that's a little quicker. Website that takes a little bit to kick in. Oh, there we go. It's not going to make your internet uh, connection any quicker, but your browser should be a lot faster now it's got memory. That's a lot quicker than it was. Way quicker, actually. So, we definitely got a little bit better performance. I don't know if I could run... Well, I can run Sierra. Sierra, by the way, is now supported uh, on this computer, uh, on the MacBook Pro 2009. Originally, um, you could go to the regular Sierra, apparently, but then there was a patch to go to high Sierra. A lot of people were complaining about it because it was really super sluggy. Well, upgrading to 8 gigs might help you out a lot because um, there's more than enough processing power, and half a gig at NVIDIA is quite a bit um, as far as doing that stuff goes. But, um, you know, um, I would probably say stick with Yosemite for as long as you can. Um, you know, I needed the performance increase for this thing because of some programs that I'm running. I'm now using this to run my, 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 my recording studio software with, so I needed more memory. And 8 gigs is definitely more than sufficient um, to do what I need to do with my studio gear. And the computer itself is more than fast enough, even with Yosemite. Because I've been doing it on my iMac uh, with 8 gigs of RAM, 16 gigs of RAM. 16 actually was way better. Um, and I was also running some super heavy duty stuff on my iMac, which I still do. But this is definitely going to be a huge improvement uh, for this. So there you go. That's how you uh, upgrade your MacBook Pro uh, to 8 gigs of RAM and doing it safely. 
And uh, like I said, you will not void your warranty as long as you don't do anything stupid and cook it. So, you know, just be careful, you know, ground yourself out like I showed you, you know, and watch those screws because there's those three that are different. Okay, and make sure you got a proper fitting screwdriver. It's very important that this screwdriver fits absolutely perfect. Otherwise, you'll screw up the heads on those screws too. They may be made out of steel, but they're only so strong when they're that tiny. Okay, so you don't need any screw ups. So, like I said, you go to it till it stops, a little bit of snugness, all is needed. Now I got two 2 gig chips that I have no use for. I'll have to put them up for sale. So, anyways, there you go, guys. Thanks a lot. Catch you on the next one.